welcome back to DXB Today, where we are joined by a guest who is absolutely no stranger to DXB Today. Stuart, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Stuart Henry. Fleming, Managing Partner of EnviroServe. Uh, Stuart, firstly, for those that don't know, could you tell us what EnviroServe is and what you guys do? Gosh, EnviroServe uh, is predominantly all about electronic waste, mm -hmm. which is one of the world's uh, largest and growing uh, waste streams in the world. And, uh, kind of hazardous, so we have to uh, take care of it and make sure uh, that we recycle it properly. Mm -hmm. And recycling, as you know, starts with the collection and yeah. ends with ensuring that it's uh, processed properly. So that's what we do at EnviroServe. And it's so important to do that, and I think Tatiana, you'll agree that it's good to recycle and to make use out of these things, but it's also good to not waste in the first place. So what advice would you give people, because I know people are always throwing away cables, cheap ones, like what advice would you give to not create the waste that they, then you have to recycle? Yeah, the uh, electronics and electrical, which also forms part of the, the chain, um, is uh, lifespans of these uh, items are becoming shorter and shorter. You know, when suddenly you put a new uh, update on, mm -hmm. doesn't work, that means you've got to go and buy a new, a new device. So uh, just be careful, call us up, um, get hold of uh, a company that uh, collects electronic waste and uh, dispose of it uh, in, a, in, a, in a compliant manner. Mm -hmm. So Stuart, I know that um, EnviroServe is part of a program that is encouraging uh, manufacturing in the UAE. Could you explain a little bit more about that for us? Absolutely. We've uh, had the uh, pleasure of ha having His Excellency uh, Dr. Sultan al Jabba to EnviroServe, who, as you know, is President Delegate of uh, COP28. And uh, him and I had a good discussion about this being an industry now. It's mm -hmm. no longer a company, it's an industry which is now to ensure that all those metals, those precious metals, even the plastic, uh, the base metals, the copper, is retained in the country, thus ensuring uh, retention of wealth and that we utilise those metals now for production and manufacturing in the UAE. Yeah, I mean, the government has moved leaps and bounds in terms of ta changing regulations in the UAE specifically. Uh, Tatiana, which direction do you think we're going in? I mean, do you think we're, we're up to par with the, with the rest of the world now? I don't think, but uh, the will is there. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's about uh, also looking at how much we're importing in the country and increasing the capacity of manufacturing. Yeah. So we are lacking here prime resources by increasing the recycling and, and a more circular design in what we do, hopefully we'll retain and keep here some materials that historically we, we were always sent abroad. Mm. So here we would gather it, divide it, separate, segregate, but then we would ship it abroad. And I think now it's more about keeping it here, reducing carbon footprint also of that transportation and seeing how we can use it locally. But Stuart, it's amazing how the government are recognising that electronic waste is a completely different sector to, to the rest. Why do you think that is? Uh, it's value. Mm. It's value and it's, uh, it's complexity. Um, and to add to what uh, Tatiana said, it's amazing. In the last 18 months, I think, I think we've seen a huge change in, uh, in the uh, regulations compared to the 18 years that EnviroServe has been going. Mm -hmm. So 18 months has been incredible. And uh, it's not only for COP28, but beyond as well. Yeah. Now, Stuart, I know that there's so many things that the UAE is doing. Every year there's something new. Do you think there's a chance for more manufacturing here in the United Arab Emirates? Absolutely. The drivers make it in the Emirates. And uh, with that in mind, there's so many uh, industries, there's so many uh, opportunities from base metals, from recycling, from products, uh, ranging in a plethora of different uh, ways to be, as Tatiana said, remain in the country and form the base of the raw material to now manufacture and be uh, self-sufficient and add to the uh, uh, add to the, uh, benefit the economy of the UAE. Mm. And now let's talk about the future because that's what everyone mm. is focused on, <laughs> Stuart. At COP28 will show us the future of the world as a yep. whole. What about EnviroServe? What are you going to be focused on? Another division of EnviroServe uh, is the refrigerant gas. Now COP28 mm -hmm. is all about the, uh, the conference of, of parties and uh, it's all about climate change. Not so much about recycling, but it's about climate change, and that's ozone depleting substances, and that's changing to uh, a better methodologies of, uh, of, of capturing uh, carbon emissions, etc. Mm -hmm. And the key with EnviroServe is our refrigerant gas uh, division, which ensures that we capture refrigerant gas that's used throughout air conditioning units in the UAE, capture it, reclaim it, and reutilize it rather than venting to atmosphere. So, mm -hmm. a law. 
a, a, a meeting I had with the, uh, uh, with the ministers in March. A law was passed in June and implemented in July. So wow. that's wow. how quick things could work. And Decision making. Absolutely. Like that. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. Hats off to the uh, to the uh, uh, the ministries and uh, the government of the mm. UA, of course, challenging what needs to be done and acting on it. Fantastic. So, Stuart, I believe that you're doing walking tours at EnviroServe. Can you explain a little bit about those and why would somebody want to come on a walking tour at EnviroServe? We are. It's <laughs> exciting. We, we had our first uh, launch uh, yesterday in the month leading up to COP, okay. uh, the Wednesday VIP Enviro Tour. Um, was well uh, well presented and it's to showcase effectively uh, a, uh, a building of sustainability. Mm -hmm. uh, we have ducting going to a large vacuum cleaner which ensures zero to air. Mm. So uh, it really is a, 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 a fundamental um, uh, building in the UA that shows that we're walking the walk mm -hmm. as a country and we're talking the talk and not just, uh, just chatting about uh, about um, sustainability and it's only 20 minutes away so every Wednesday we're doing these tours it's only 20 minutes away from from Expo 2020 mm -hmm. so we're in touch with the committee to hopefully have delegates during COP28 uh, to the facility. Stuart Fleming as always a pleasure thank you so much for being on. Thank you. All right now I know that since the environment is in your safe hands I'm gonna sleep <laughs> a lot better right now. <laughs> and now it's time to move on to our spotlight we're talking about a waste management company which is dedicated to make sure that the UAE has a greener future. Check this out. My name is Anita Nuri. I'm the CEO of Green Growth Planning and Consultancy and I've worked with Green Energy Solutions and Sustainability as CEO and leader of that company for the past 12 years. So first, um, I don't like to use the word problem because uh, any challenge is always an opportunity and that's how we've always approached our business. And Green Energy Solutions and Sustainability was established because we pioneered the first landfill gas to energy project in Dubai at the al Qusais landfill that's receiving currently 7,000 tons of municipal waste a day. Hopefully the incineration plant, once it's fully operational, will reduce that. So my biggest success, I think, would be uh, the al Qusais landfill. Pioneering the first landfill gas to energy project in this region and having it registered with the UNFCCC as a large-scale CDM project has been a success then. It has won many awards for us and for Dubai Municipality. My long-term goal for Green Growth Planning and Consultancy would be to support education, to spread the word, to bring in technologies that are uh, solidly working other places and can be plugged into the system of Dubai and be able to, in the whole UAE and actually the whole region, deliver what we are looking for. Reduce emissions, make it green, make it more environmental and save the future for our children. I think Dubai is the ideal place to do business simply because it celebrates innovation and it gives you a platform to bring in technologies, bring in ideas and help it grow. The government supports you in this and I support that as well. What a great way to turn our landfills into green energy. But it's now time for the roundup. Nimi, what have you got for us today? Yeah, absolutely. We are talking all things global warming. 75% of UAE residents think global warming can be combated with technology. That is a heavy percentage of people here in the UAE. You know, I believe in collaboration and, you know, us working with technology to make the world a better place. Tatiana, what do you think about that statistic? I agree that innovation and technology are going to play a very big role in, uh, in helping us in climate change, but I still believe that a lot of work needs to be done by people in behaviour change. We are the first step to, to this uh, mega challenge that we have. We need to reduce the way we consume, we, we consume mm -hmm. on a daily basis. That's the first thing we need but to do. I also think that there's a problem when it comes to the environment of people 
saying it's all on you because obviously there need to be entities that make it easier and make it more accessible to be environmentally safe. And I feel like as humans, we're always looking for the technology that's going to save us. When I think personally, we should go be going backwards instead of like using more technology. We should, you know, go back to the simpler times, like when the milkman used to bring the milk bottle, you reuse it, you send it back. I think we could do that with all our containers. What do you think, Tatiana? Absolutely. This should be done actually for every kind of drink. Um, I remember this for the milk, of course, but even the Coca-Cola, the water, the Pepsis, they used to come in reusable and uh, bottles. Mm. Um, and we also need to think that, yes, we live in a very advanced country in terms of technology, but there's a big chunk of the population around the world that doesn't even have access to internet or to electricity. And we, we need to address that. Uh, in terms, for example, of food security, we hear a lot about these new technologies and um, mega farms that are going to grow food, you know, underwater, in space. But these are very costly. What are we going to do with the, the, the little farmers that are in Africa and India? Uh, we need also to have accessible solutions and cost-effective solutions. Otherwise, a lot of these people are going to stop working. Mm. And who's going to produce all the food? And this is uh, applicable to so many other industries. Well, luckily, COP28 is happening in a month, so we're going to sort all that up. <laughs> but what's coming up on DXB today? That's my question. Well, we're going to be heading down to Dig It, which is a really cool thrift and vintage store in, in Dubai. Khalid's going to be down there. And our first workout to mark the Dubai Fitness Challenge. And I literally cannot wait, so stay right there.